How much does each pal sell for in pal world? That's what I was trying to find out, but once again Google decided to troll me even though I spelled pal correctly this time at least. Well, I guess just like with items, I'll have to be the one to answer that question, which is honestly pretty easy, as all you have to do is catch all 111 pals in the pal deck. Wait, there are 26 alternate versions of existing pals? Okay, just catch those as well. Some of them are hidden and can only be obtained through breeding. Set up some farms, make a ton of cakes, and bam, just like that we have all 137 pals ready to be priced for your convenience. Hmm, seems like the price of pals change depending on their experience. Well, I guess we'll have to find a consistent level for them. Might as well make it the max, right? Which would be 50. Well, I don't hate myself enough not to crank up the experience gain to 20x, but still the amount of times I cycle through these legendaries without even knowing you can make three of them spawn at once is criminal. But finally, here we have it. All 137 pals at max level, ready to be priced and placed on a beautiful spreadsheet. That being said, would it be a Borax video if I didn't sprinkle in something extra? Let's do the boss cheese so we can price them as well. Now my friends say my gameplay is somewhat questionable and might blur some ethical lines, but catching a bunch of humans, leveling them up to 50, then seeing what they sell for honestly is pushing even my moral code to its limit. But I did indeed do it, and included it for you guys as well, so at least it never has to be done again. I will say, I really wanted to catch the reincarnated guy and see how much his services would go for, but despite my best efforts to kindly convince him to join my team, he just doesn't seem eager to be part of my crew. Although this kind of behavior he's displaying would make him a perfect fit. That all being said, we can finally see that the pal which sells for the most is obviously going to be the Jet Dragon, as it's the highest in the pal deck. Wait, you're telling me that it actually ranks 13th among pals? So the actual pal that sells for the most is a level 50 Blazamut at an impressive 4,734 gold coins. Oh, what's that? A legendary sphere sells for 4,520, meaning you're only getting 214 gold in profit? That doesn't seem too impressive. But man, a lot of you guys are swearing by the pal selling strategy. To better express how unimpressive the sale price for pals truly is, I created the price per assault ammo ratio. Because the ammo costs 150 a pop, we can see that selling a max level Blazamut gets you less than 2 full clips. So hopefully you didn't use any in the catching of the pal, or else you are definitely not making your money's worth. Now the top 2 pals in sale value are the Blazamut and Relaxosaurus Relux, which can only be obtained by capturing their alpha pals, and maybe the alpha versions sell for more than the regular version. Nope, it's actually the exact same price. What about a lucky version? Those are really cool and are surely more valuable. First of all, if you are selling a lucky pal for a few thousand coins, then please keep that to yourself, as I'm pretty sure that's just a crime against both humanity and palanity. Especially because they also still sell for the same price. Got a bunch of really cool OP traits in a level 5 pal? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Sells the exact same as any level 50 pal, as levels are the only thing that changes price. Well, technically that's not actually true. Remember how I mentioned that I caught those tower bosses? Well, Azel, Marcus, and Victor, all males by the way, don't affect the price of any of their pals. Meanwhile, Zoe and Lily actually do, but they lower them. In Zoe's case, her Grizzbolt sells for 500 less, and Lily's Lylene gets a 293 coin discount. I have no clue why this is the case, but it is part of the fun you can discover when spending over 200 plus hours on creating spreadsheets on the economy of PAL World. Before we start an intense gender inequality debate, let's change the subject and bring up the obvious question, which should be, what happens to the pals when they get sold? Okay, never mind, never mind. That's even worse. Let's talk about the sale price of pals who are not level 50, as that is honestly quite a difficult level to obtain, especially if you're playing with legitimate sliders. Well, funnily enough, it's sort of difficult to figure out, as the increase in price is not consistent among pals. Take any of the low level pals, for instance. They will all start off selling for 82 gold coins, and at level 2 they will sell for 90, which is an increase of 8. But then at level 3 they will sell for 97 gold coins, which is only an increase of 7. This pattern is at least consistent of going from up 7 to up 8, meaning it's probably going up by some decimal point, then getting rounded. Now this is a low level pal. What if we took one of the most expensive pals out there, like the Relaxosaurus? At level 1 it sells for 844, then at level 2, 929, which is an increase of 77. Then it goes up to 998, which again is an increase of 77, then it increases by 77 again until we reach level 6, where it actually only increased by 76. But then again it goes back up to increasing by 77. 
pretty much what I'm trying to express is that the increases are not consistent. Maybe someone is really great at math and knows exactly what's going on and can make a copy of my spreadsheet and play with the numbers that I have, but pretty much what I figured out from testing is that the level 1 price of each pal is about 18.22222% of its level 50 price, which is displayed in this column for your perusal. Now understand that level 1 is only the most useful if you're breeding pals fresh. Oftentimes you'll be selling pals at higher levels, so I decided to give everyone another data point estimation, which will be the sale price at level 25. Now because it's not consistent amongst the pals, what I did was find the actual level 25 price of a bunch of random pals and found the varying percentages of the level 50 prices that they were. Now if I was really smart, I would have found the average of all the changes, but what I did was look for a number that looked reasonable and I came up with an estimate that a level 25 pal is about 58.2% the cost of a level 50 pal, which will be this column here. Now you can see that when compared to the actual level 25 value of some of the pals, the numbers are a few gold coins off but none more than 10, which I'm pretty satisfied with. So there you have it, the prices of the pals and a bit more. An obvious follow-up question of course is, are selling pals even worth it as a main source of income? And my answer would be absolutely not. Leveling up pals can be a bit of a nuisance. If we do a conservative estimate at looking at the best sale price for a level 25 pal only being 2,756 gold coins, I'd much rather just sell 18 nails than have to catch a Relaxosaurus for my income. Even if you decide to farm Alpha Blazamutes to sell, you can only do that when they respawn and could just make 20 pizzas instead. Now I am talking about catching and selling some complicated pals, but maybe there's a secret super easily farmable pal that sells for a fair amount. I'm happy you asked that because that means the effort I went through of creating an obtained difficulty scale for every single pal wouldn't have been a waste of time. I rated each pal on a scale of 1 to 5 based on my personal opinion of how hard they are to obtain. A 1 rating means they are super abundant and usually low level. A 2 rating are pals which are in the higher level ranges, 20 to 35, and might be a bit more rare. A 3 rating are for pals who only spawn in caves, are rare from what I've seen, or are more difficult in general. I gave pals a 4 rating if they are in high level areas, or are just super far away. Pals that can only be obtained in alpha form or through breeding I gave a 5 to, as they just aren't that abundant, and if you're in the stage of the game where you are mass producing cakes for breeding, then I know you have access to better money making methods. I gave a special rating to capturing and selling humans a 6, as they are surprisingly resistant to pal spheres in my experience. Well maybe not too surprising, as living in one of those spheres is not something I actually want to imagine. Finally, the bosses I gave a 10 rating to because they're only catchable through exploits even though they are super easy admittedly. So after assigning these personal ratings and dividing it by the prices, we can see that the best pal to sell is of course the Sweepa and Cinnamoth. Wait really? Of all the pals of the game, the Big Marshmallow and Moth are the best to sell? I mean selling for 2700 and 2565 at max level is quite impressive and do stand by them being pretty easy to obtain as they're constantly spawning all over the map especially the Cinemoth, which are super abundant. Okay, Editor Borax here. Upon getting footage of me catching Cinemoths and Sweepas, I realize that they are definitely a bit harder because of their level and deserve a 2 rating instead, which does have their price to difficulty ratio. Still placing them near the top, and their pure abundance does make them still great to catch, but they are a bit tricky, especially in the early game. Elizabeth became the new leader for this category, with them exploding on you making them harder to catch makes me actually put a little 0.5 making them a 2.5 difficulty overall, because when they are in that mode, they are much harder to catch. The easiest pals to snag, and also sell for a fair amount, will now be the Ruby, Malpaca, and Celerace. But in the mid game, Cinemoths and Sweepas are still great as well as Nightwings, although catching flying pals can be a bit annoying. Relaxosaurus selling for a whopping 2688 at chest level 25, while not being the most impossible to catch, makes them another great target for money making. A 3 rating might seem a little harsh, but similarly to the Mamorist, these two pals are true tests for early game players, but do become quite trivial in the late game. If you need a lot of pal fluids, then Celeray are actually a lot better to catch if you also want to sell them, as they go for a higher price than Gobfins, and are similarly abundant, which again seems random as you see them earlier, and they have a lower pal deck number, but that's the point of the sheet to find interesting patterns like that. Another interesting pattern we can see is that the different variants of pals have different sale values, and even if they might actually be harder to obtain by a lot, they could sell for less like with those gob fins again. I've been avoiding talking about this as much as I can, but those PIDF soldiers slash black marketeers and syndicate elites do sell for a lot at 4,500. Considering that besides the black marketeer, these um not pals are absolutely useless, 
you could be tempted to offload them, but they definitely are not a money making strategy as catching them is so difficult. Though, if you are already doing some black marketeer farming, might as well sell the ones you catch for even more gold. So, when is it worth it to sell your pals for money? Well, actually if you catch any of the pals with just basic pal spheres, as long as you don't use too many resources in lowering its health so that it's catchable, then you can actually make a profit in doing so. Because even if you buy the pal spheres for 120 gold coins, every single pal sells for more as long as they are level 7, and if they are level 25, you do earn 142 profit, which is actually not bad at all. In fact, I'm actually going to include the profits you can get based on using each sphere's opportunity cost if you were to sell the sphere itself compared to if you were to sell the pal you caught with the sphere and sold the pal at level 25 so you can determine if you would have lost money or not. That being said, it's pretty time consuming compared to other money making methods, but at least you're gaining other materials in the process, and more importantly, gaining that sweet, sweet experience, because don't forget that you do need to catch 10 of each pal to maximize the experience you gain from them. In the late game, when you're trying to breed the perfect pals, you will also run out of pal box space, and selling pals almost becomes a necessity to make room because viewing cages will only be able to take you so far, and that extra bit of cash you gain is decent, but again nothing that has ever wowed me when compared to making money through selling items. That's pretty much all I have for you guys. I'll include all of this data in the same spreadsheet that I also have all the prices for every single item in Pal World, and of course it will be the top link in the description, as well as the link to the video where I talk about every single item in the game and how to actually make a ton of money. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, maybe consider subscribing. My next project will be to make a tier list talking about my opinion of the best pals to have as workers, and in that I will be giving you guys access to my sortable pal deck excel sheet that I'm making which lets you easily sort the pals based on the skills you may want, as well as some other bonus features. Once again, thanks for watching, and best of luck on your money-making adventures.